Hi, I'm Sandy McVeigh, and this is Microsoft Word 2010 Mail Merge. How to retain number formatting when you're merging from Excel. Have you ever brought in currency, phone numbers, and dates, and they just don't look right during your mail merge? Well, we can fix that. All of the information I'm providing in this video, as well as practice files, is available at my website, www.tinyurl.com slash smcvey. So first of all, let's look at our sample database. And I'm using Excel because that is just the easy thing to use. So here we are. Okay, so in this sample we're using Excel and there are 16 records. It's a very small database. And you can see our fields here at the top. This particular tutorial is focusing on the numbers that we have formatted here in the stipend column, the phone number, and the date column. So if you're familiar with Excel, you know that you can select the column and on the home ribbon in the number group, you can choose a number of different formats. So you could choose short date or long date, or if you go to more number formats, several different types of dates in between short and long. The same with the phone number. Phone numbers are formatted under the special option, which is not available there. So if we go to more number formats, special has zip code, zip code plus four, phone numbers, and social security number formatting. You're probably familiar with the currency or the accounting. Okay. Accounting format will align the dollar sign to the left of the cell and the currency formatting will put the dollar sign right next to your numbers. So it just depends on what you're working with and what you want to use. But the important thing is how we have the numbers formatted in our Excel data is how we'd like them to appear in our mail merge. So what do we have to do to fix that? So I'm going to close this window and I'm not going to save anything. And I'm just going to open up this little sample to show you. So right now, I haven't done the tricky thing I'm going to tell you. So if I were to make a mail merge right now, I'll go to mailings, and this time I'm going to choose a directory because I'm just going to have it run on and on. This is in the header of this particular document because this has the instructions of what I'm doing. I'm going to come down one and I'm going to select the recipients, use an existing database, and go to that Excel file. I'm going to choose the sheet with the people on it. You know why, we've talked about it before. The other one is blank. And I'm going to put in the first name and the last name of the particular person, and then all the rest of these are fields that are already there. So if I drop this down, you'll see phone, stipend, date. So if I were to preview the results, this is what it looks like. Unformatted phone number, unformatted money, unformatted date. So I'm going to make an adjustment in Word by going to the File menu, Options. There's uh, under this menu, choose Advanced. And then at the very bottom, there's a group called General, and there's a checkbox that needs to be checked called Confirm File Format Conversion on Open. It makes no sense, and it should be checked by default, but that's another story. Once you've done this in your Word program, Word remembers. You don't have to do it for every file. So I'll click OK, but to commit that change, I have to close the Word program altogether. So I'm not going to save my changes, and I'm going to make sure that everything I have in Word was closed, and then I'm going to open this same file again. It's going to try and connect to my database if I had say, chosen save. I don't want to do that because it won't remember how to update it. So all of this is exactly what I'm doing in the header of this document, just so that you can see that. So 
So here I go, back to mailings. I'm going to start the mail merge. I'm going to make it a directory. I'm going to select the recipients and use an existing list. Go to the desktop. Choose the database file. And this window looks a little different. Instead of just having the sheet names, it says OLEDB database files. I want to click show all. So now that I have all of these options to choose from, scroll down to the bottom and choose MS Excel worksheets via DDE, which is dynamic data exchange. That's Microsoft's fancy way to say, if I have it formatted in Excel, I want it formatted in this meal merge. So we'll click OK for our entire spreadsheet. It opens up your file and then puts it in the background. So I'm going to insert my first name again, insert my last name, close this, hit return, put a little space in between there. And now if I preview, my numbers are formatted properly. Isn't that lovely? So now I can finish and merge. Click Edit Individual Document. All right, so that looks good. So I'm going to hit Enter twice to give myself a little bit of space in between the entries. I'm going to go to Finish and Merge, Edit Individual Documents, and click OK. So now I still have this big header at the top, but you can see here are all of our entries coming in, rolling one after the other. And if I wanted to, I could select them all saying control A. I can lay them out in a three a two column style if I'd like. And if I want to force a break, I can force a column break wherever I'd like. So now if I were to zoom out, so now if you zoom out, you'll see that we have our directory on three different pages. So thanks for watching. Come to my website www.tinyurl.com slash smcvay to learn more.